Hello, my name is Anne Marie Cannon, and I'm the host of Armchair Historians. What's your favorite history? Each episode begins with this one question. Our guests come from all walks of life. YouTube celebrities, comedians, historians, even neighbors from the small mountain community that I live in. They're people who love history and get really excited about a particular time, place, or person from our distant or not so distant past. The jumping off point is the place where they became curious, then entered the rabbit hole into discovery. Fueled by an unrelenting need to know more, we look at history through the filter of other people's eyes. Armchair Historians is a Belgian Rabbit production. Stay up to date with us through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Wherever you listen to your podcast, that is where you'll find us. Armchair Historians is an independent, commercial-free podcast. If you'd like to support the show and keep it ad-free, you can buy us a cup of coffee through Ko-fi, or you can become a patron through Patreon. Links to both in the episode notes. Okay, so last week I started a new segment in which I offer you, my listeners, podcast recommendations. This week, I'm already veering off course, but just a little bit. So I'm going to recommend that you check out the Potato Lady podcast reviews, which technically, exponentially increases the potential podcast recommendations you'll get out of this one segment. The Potato Lady also hosts the Not Again podcast, which brings college-level analysis to preschool-level content. Hosts Alan and Rebecca overanalyze kids' entertainment in order to maintain their sanity. Links to both provided in the episode notes. And now here's the potato lady to tell us more. Hi, I'm Bex, also known as Potato Lady Podcast Reviews. Every weekday, I tweet out reviews of indie podcasts. My goal is to unite listeners with their next favorite show, like the one you're listening to now. I also have a newsletter that provides links to reviews, sneak peeks, ad space, and more. So follow me on Twitter at BexGoose, that's B-E-X-G-O-O-S, to start getting weekdaily reviews. Find all the info you need, including the link to sign up for my newsletter, in the thread pinned to my profile. And feel free to get at me if you need a recommendation. And now, back to your show. My guest today is a breath of fresh air. A self-proclaimed black sheep, she cannot and will not be put into a box. Guided by early swing and jazz influences, hailing back to her almost two decades career as a musician in the Royal Air Force, Madame Misfit dove into the sea of electro-swing big fish armed with her clarinet, verve, and a crafty sense of humor, eroding the would-be solidified boundaries of musical genres. The inspiration behind her music comes from childhood influences of television and too much panda pop. Her style has been described as the extraordinary, the peculiar, the misunderstood, and can't quite put your finger on it. Add a beat and a sprinkle of Monty Python, and this is what you get. I talked to Madame Misfit about her favorite history, the music that came out of World War II, often referred to as the Golden Age. But first, let's finish listening to the intro music playing in the background, Everyone Wants to Be a Cat, performed by the one and only Madame Misfit. When everybody wants to be a cat, I swear with a heart makes you wish you were born every time. Set music back to the gay man days. Oh, everybody wants to be a cat because the cat's the only cat who knows where it's at. And does you always have a welcome mat? Cause everybody digs a swinging cat.
Madam Misfit, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So we just really get right off into the conversation and you're going to tell me what's your favorite history that we're going to be talking about today. My favorite history has to be the war era, unfortunately, 1939 to 1945, and in particular, the music from that period. What is it about that period that resonates with you in that particular subject? Well, starting back, it kind of draws down on who I am today. But that is all based on uh, the music, the morale, the passion and the drive that came from that era. Obviously, terrible, terrible times that echo with nowadays as well. The music of those golden years, as they get referred to, I use as a healer. They've often referred to in documentaries and, and writings that music is like a vitamin M. It's a medication that can't be prescribed. And that's exactly what um, people such as Dame Vera Lynn did. That was their job, was to raise the morale and the spirits of those troops and those families back home and that's why the music is just so passionate and so uplifting and joyous that well it, it, it echoes through to today as well the music and that vibe indefinitely and it certainly has an effect on what I do now as an artist as well. And what is it that you do now? So I am a, uh, I'm a comedic vocalist um, but I work in particular with a, a very new genre of music, uh, which is called Electro Swing. But you might know of it more as Vintage Remix. So, oh, okay. If, yeah. It is a very small, passionate genre. Um, for me, uh, it, it, it's it got that, that vibe, that pizzazz. Um, it's got the, the 1930s, 40s sound. Um, but it's it's revamped. I mean, the most widely known um, band that kind of brought the genre into um, into most most houses is a band called Postmodern Jukebox. You might have heard of. No. They do well. They do covers, a lot of covers, but a lot of them are based on a Gatsby Charleston kind of sound. And we all know the Great Gatsby. Was that the Great Gatsby? Because that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Okay. That's exactly that. That is where I first heard Electro Swing. There's a couple of tracks in there um, that got my ear tuned in as well. And it's that vintage sound, but with modern electronic equipment, synthesizers and that. So it's taking those songs of the 30s and 40s period and that kind of passion from within them and just bringing them in line with modern music and the amazing work that today's producers can do and they can sample the voices of Louis Armstrong while being able to revamp it and rework it and it's absolutely it's amazing and to do the dances as well when I perform out as well I teach a Charleston which which is for the steampunk community which is uh, the majority of my following they love a love a dance so I do enjoy to teach teach a Charleston indeed yeah so. I've, I've, I was watching you know I usually do a deep dive 24 hours before I interview somebody if they're they have a platform online and I was watching you and you know really compelling I, I just you're so entertaining and I recommend anybody who's listening to that go over and uh, check out Madam Misfit's YouTube page see what she has out there because it's it's nice it's new so yeah, um, I, yeah I really enjoy what you do Thank you. I think I've done amazingly well for where I started just over a year ago, writing. I've always sung. My actual background was as a vintage songstress. I still perform a lot of vintage music, particularly through the last year. I've, I've serenaded a lot of care homes and whatnot out in the streets. So my vintage music, vintage ties are still uh, very, very strong, but that gives me a really good insight into making things with a more modern twist as well. So during 2020, I was able to release an album, amazingly, my own album, which I was so excited about to have been only writing music for a year and it, to have been picked up by a label as well was, was wow, absolutely what's amazing. Name? What's the name of your album? It's called Elixir of Swing. So for the steampunks, it's kind of the elixir. The idea is that all of the tracks together make up a concoction, a big potion, and it's got all this kind of swing vibe to it as well. So there's eight lovely tracks on there, um, including a lovely Charleston as well. 
I'm kind of an, an outsider in the genre of electro swing. I say an outsider, I'm, I'm a different, and hence my name, Madam Misfit. I don't like to go along with the same old, you know, I like to kind of change things up, swap things around. So as well as singing, I also do a style of rap. You know, I was going to ask you because I was listening to a couple of your songs and I thought, that sounds an awful lot like rap, the way that you do that. That's it. Yeah. So, um, and it, it feels, it still feels really weird for me to refer to myself as a rap artist. <laughs> I prefer the term poetry with a beat. I think it's a bit easier or spoken word, but, um, but over here, a, a term was coined by a couple of gentlemen called chap hop which is essentially hip hop music, okay. but in a, a chap style manner, like you've already spoken with Tom Carradine. We'd, we'd class him in England as a chap, you know, an eloquently dressed gentleman. So it's, it's kind of a rap form based with the Queen's very, very best English. And that's, I'm the first woman to achieve that in this very small genre. And with, you know, trying to break boundaries at the moment, yeah, being a female in that powerful position has is, is done me cool. really well to stand aside and, and do that and yeah it's a great it's a great feeling and I find it really um, empowering uh, to write rap to write spoken words whether it be of the moment or about something very comical which I've got a lot of comical music out of there um, so yeah for me it's it's fun a lot of fun I love it so let's look back around to the music during the war era okay so um, one of the things that also coins me back to that era is my past, my career, is I've been in the, the military, the, the British military, so I'm in the Royal Air Force. I've been in 15 years now, but more importantly, as a musician. So as a military musician, we're brought up playing these old, powerful pieces I spend most of my time out doing marching drill displays. So my my history of music comes from that exact period. You know, the Royal Air Force, its roots, 100 years old. So that's where my roots came from. I play the clarinet as a living, and obviously our key swing band clarinetists, you know, we've got Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw, absolutely heroes of that era. And I'm able to use those sounds and even sample my own clarinet skills on my tracks today. So that's how the two, you know, beautifully marry up the music back then. But what was more exciting for me, without highlighting too much whatever kind of year we've all been through, was when, I don't know whether you saw over the pond about uh, the Majesty Our Queen, she mentioned in one of her speeches that we will all meet again, which is one of Dame Vera's most iconic yeah. tracks. Wow. So that really hit home a lot of people here. Were, were so proud to hear that song and it was lovely obviously with the passing of Dame Vera this league year as well that that piece uh, was highlighted as kind of the song of the year as well for us back here in England. There are so many parallels isn't there with this pandemic and uh, the wartime? Massively, massively. Um, there's a huge, uh, I mean the vintage culture has been going on quite a long time you know it's been about 10 years I've been performing the sounds of the 40s um, but the festivals, I know you guys over there, do you have vintage festivals? And I know a few of my friends in America and the States um, do so. Yeah, we have, there's one that happens here in Colorado. It's in Boulder. I don't know that it's a festival. It's a 1940s gala. And Tom Carradine wow. was actually supposed to come this year. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. And we're hoping that uh, things are cleared out. Yeah. by. But yeah, so there there are some and... I'm just really starting to get in. Actually, it was Tom who started me thinking on the vintage thing. And so now I'm starting to kind of get into it and want to be a part of that. So, um, yeah, we do. We do have that. And I know you guys have like Twinwood. Oh, yeah. That's where I started. That's where my... Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So um, Twinwood was the airfield where the very late Glenn Miller took his last flight before, obviously, he never never came back. Glenn Miller being the huge oh, dance band leader. And at REF Twinwood, as it was, now holds a huge music festival. Um, I've seen bands such as uh, the, the Max Raab Orchestra perform there, a huge German uh, 1930s deco orchestra perform there. There's dances. It, it's absolutely spectacular. And they did an open mic night in the Tin Hat Club. And I went along and see, sung a few of the wonderful Dame Vera's tracks and got the book and I'd had my hair done by the salons and 
a lippy done <laughs> and yeah and that, that was about yeah 10 years ago that I first went and that's oh. where I, I started but that's just one of the many many I mean over here make do amend has become um, like a regular saying keep calm and carry on and I, I was thinking the other night preparing for this why people get so hooked on that that period and I think is it just going back to a simpler time obviously there was such sadness going on but so much focus was put on the positives which I think we could all do with a little bit now and then you know just being grateful <laughs> yeah you know when you you nailed that in your spoken word that I'll definitely link out to in our episode note for this it you know, it forces, and this is what I've been thinking, it forces us to be present in a way that we're not when things are just status quo. It forces us to to be in the moment that could also be said for, uh, you know, the war. When, when you're in that kind of heightened, you know, kind of situation, it, it forces you to be in your, live in your skin. Yeah, I think times were simpler in a way than we didn't have technology, we just had each other. And I think those sorts of festivals make people realize that and it's about just going out and sometimes it's called promenading uh, promeneering you might have heard that term it's when a lot of people just they just get dressed up and they just want to walk about and show off what they're wearing and what's so wrong about doing that i think it's amazing my husband is a reenactor so he's got all the prop like the the proper gear um he he portrays world war ii reenactor yeah and World War II and interwar as well. He's got some 1930s kit, but um, yeah, we've got quite a small museum in the house when it comes to Royal Air Force history. Oh, you know? Yeah, cool. which is exciting. And then I sing at the shows and he'll be there in his kit with his weapons and doing little talks to everyone that comes by. So it's, oh, my nice. little son will sit in the pram, my daughter. And yeah, it's kind of a cute little family family affair. And it, it is exactly that the phones, everything is put aside. Obviously, I go out with my tech for, for singing and I do a lot of singing of those songs. And that's the electros will get stripped out, you know, when I do that kind of stuff. It's really, really strict. But um, but it's beautiful. And that's why it marries up so beautifully with my act as Madam Misfit as well. It's that a little bit of both, you know, taking cherry cream, taking the cream off the top and um, making it work with my, my music that is now. So who do we see? What performers, what lyricists, what... Um, you know, from that time period, do you credit with this type of uh, entertainment and music? I think of Benny Goodman. Mm, yes, right? massively. His music, um, uh, Fred Astaire gets used a lot. Sing, 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 Benny Goodman. In the mood, it was actually Glenn Miller's In the Mood that first brought me to finding Electric Swing. I was to do a, a performance with a, a fellow friend in chat hot professor elemental if you're a fan of the the genres that we're, we're diving down now you might have heard of him and he said hey you sing and i was like yes he said you come and join me on stage i was like okay knowing i only sing these true original covers so i quickly googled 1940s remix and in the mood glenn miller came up with a wonderful backing beat as well and that was how i i started i literally jumped on stage and and sang the andrew sisters version on my own and yeah and that that was the the buzz and the vibe for me but but yeah no benny goodman gets sampled loads um yeah louis armstrong fred astaire ginger rogers their music of them dancing my gosh i wish i could dance like that um gets gets used so much on electro swing videos it's just beautiful but yeah they're the kind of big big icons um trumpeters harry james uh yeah louis i love what you said about you know, because you don't think of World War II or wars as a happy time. No. And yet something really beautiful did come out of that. And it was the music and it was the experience of sharing the music. Mm -hmm. I I wonder, I just was thinking, I wonder what like Benny Goodman or who, you know, these performers who were around then, how they would think about what is happening now and how that genre is bringing back their music in, in such a different and exciting way. Well, I know that Glenn Miller was quite an iconic composer at the time. He was the first one to introduce the clarinet into his lineup 
as a, into a jazz swing band um, and his track Moonlight Serenade was one of the ones that first broke the sound, the mould. A lot of big bands, jazz bands, compro um, compromise of a big heavy sax section. But then he introduced the clarinet. So he was always up for change. He was kind of the leader of that sound. So I would like to think, with his St. Louis Blues as well, which is a beautiful piece, which does get sampled a lot, that he would be quite keen on doing something a little bit different I think and jazz improv jazz you know it's all about that kind of change up so who knows <laughs> Interesting <question. laughs> I was going to make a note uh, when harking back to some of the big names back then that, that we used to help build the morale it was it was mainly a lot of females a lot of females you know the Andrew sisters Vera Lynn Peggy Lee and I was kind of wondering why, but I think it was that hark to our soldiers of their mothers. I think it was that that draw, mm -hmm. this beautiful woman, you know, singing them home. And I'm actually, I'm involved in a project. This is sort of a sidestep now, trying to influence the power of women in music within the genre I work in. And a lot of electro, you know, DJs are quite heavily dominated by, by men. And I'm currently working in a project called Swing Sisters. And we're trying to bring women involved in this electronic production of music um, forward. And we're trying to launch an album this year, which we're very, very excited about. And there's also um, a Kickstarter, it I is, noticed, for is. that. I was just looking at that. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so Kickstarter, I'm glad you, you, you know of the phrase and, and the product, is basically you as fans and followers and avid supporters help us launch this product which will be uh, not only an album collaborated with all these huge names in music there would be myself marcella papini from the papini sisters the lady called maria lavu as well from a huge band over here called dotty moonshine and many there's about 10 of us and growing so it'll be an album there'll also be events put on we will go out as the swing sisters come to events and put on events as well live shows and if you head to kickstarter and just type in swing sisters we'll come up and our pledge is for uh, 3800 british pounds and we're almost, I think it must be a quarter of the way there now. And that money is used for the production, the mastering, uh, physical albums. There's a big list, but because you are helping us set us up, you actually in turn, for how much you pledge, get goodies back. So you're the first ones to get the disc, first ones to get it signed. You know, you'd like you're the, the first direct access and you'd be contributing towards hopefully a huge step for women in music. Well, we, we'll definitely link out to that and I'll put that out on social media and just the whole theme of women. And this is where, you know, I'm, I'm trying to um, have joy in my life in the United States. We have our first female that is going to be in the White House, and it's uh, a woman of color, no less. Yeah. So, you know, I'm getting chills listening to you talk about this, because it's reminding me of, you know, for all the backward motion there's been, we're moving forward. Yeah. And um, this sounds like a really worthwhile project. I'm really excited about it. And um, good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm excited too. not only being a very very small fish in a very large sea within the music industry. But the, the girls I'm working with, you know, they've got so much, so much vision and so much scope. My track is submitted, it's sealed. And if you become a Kickstarter supporter, you'll actually get to hear a little snippet of it as well. So I'm very, very excited um, to be part of the project and the, and the women. And um, yeah, it'd be great to have anyone and everyone on board. We'll take you all. Um, I was going to ask, I was going to mention that the intro track that I'm hoping to use with yourselves, I thought I'd start you off slowly and gently, and I thought I'd actually send you a, a remix of um, the wonderful Disney, Everybody Wants to Be a Cat from the Aristocats. Uh, everybody oh. loves a little bit of Disney. I um, visited California some years ago and went to Disneyland, Disney World. And, oh, okay. and uh, Aristocats was one of my favorite Disney tracks. Obviously, Disney being a fourth, 1940s period as well. Some amazing films. So everybody wants to be a cat. It's a straight up remix, but it is in an electro swing style. So I wanted to start everyone on the baby steps with everybody wants to be a cat. And I didn't want to dive straight into some of my harder hitting music, which if you've explored my YouTube channels or Facebook and Instagram, um, I'm 
quite comedic and some of the tracks you might not I don't know it depends how how free your mind goes but there is one track in particular which is on my album called True You and we were talking earlier about changing the ways diversity women in power and True You is a track that has done really well over here because of the meaning behind it and it's about just that itself being true to yourself the track talks about diversity um, your uh, your religion your color your creed your hair uh, your sexuality and it was made and launched during lockdown here in the UK and the video which is on YouTube actually involves everyone at home doing these outfit changes so they're suddenly in their kind of normal mundane socially acceptable clothing and then they change it up and I've got some amazing burlesque dancers in there I've got some drag queens and kings and it's it's amazing the uh, the audience and the attraction that we had with that piece just just basically by shouting out just being true to yourself um, I've had a lot of people relate I love that because that's the other thing that I'm trying to do um one of my more recent interviews is I interviewed a married couple Hugh Nini and Neil Treadwell. Years ago, they started collecting photographs of men in love. You know, this is a very important history that it's a history that has been hidden and erased. And they like to go to flea markets and stuff. And they found this, this box of pictures. And there was a, a picture of two men that they perceived as having the look because that that's a criteria for every picture that they collected. And so over the years, they've collected thousands of pictures and the criteria is they have to believe like I don't remember they have a percentage that you know because you can't really know although a couple of them they have had a verification that they were actually um, couples so I want to bring out I want to bring these histories out into the light and so I love that that is the song that you're cho choosing for the outro. And um, that is the kind of tone I want to set in my podcast. I want us to start yeah. looking at history in a different way, too. Definitely. Definitely. Time yep. to change it. My vision behind the track True You, it was written um, before the pandemic. And the chorus is just a load of da, 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 you know, sing along, really easy. But it, the idea wasn't about the words. It was about the coming together of people no matter what, you know, when you, uh, and, um, someone on stage says, you know the word, sing along, and you just get a crowd of mutes and a few. But I didn't want that to be the issue. I wanted everyone just to come, make noise, arms around each other. Um, and that, that was the vision behind writing this song. So, um, and I will at some point get to perform it in exactly those circumstances. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. it will happen. It will happen. <laughs> we, will, we will be together again. <laughs> This pandemic has brought a lot of people, um, particularly of a certain age range, more involved with technology. It's kind of forced them, um, you know, whether it be online shopping or having to do um, a new passport and that online, you know, the queues at the post offices are, 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 are you know, vastly reduced yeah. because of needing and not going outside. So, and it, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that people have been held back and are now grasping it not through want but through the having to but um necessity that's what yeah, that's so strange about this everybody is going through it it's not you know it, as me as an artist it's not me being frustrated that I didn't get that gig or or look at them they're doing really well none of us are getting any gigs we're all on the same platform you know it's it really that's a really good point mm -hmm. that is a really good point yeah. we are all going through this together and that's another thing about the war you know when we're talking about uh the the war it's that was a, a communal experience and everybody mm -hmm. was struggling with the same yeah. thing and that's another parallel to what's going on now exactly. that's a really good point mm -hmm. exactly you know there were no um hierarchy you know there was no no chosen people down you know where things should drop and who should live and who should die it was kind of everyone was pulled right down just like with covid at the moment it's got no selections it doesn't you know it's got no choice so yeah just over to the music just stay inside and put the music on <laughs> that's it and carry on that's the one i meant to ask you and of my tracks have you listened to any? Have you got a favorite? Have you? I have listened to them, <clears throat> to them, but it's so different. The music is like I, 
I, I need to go back and listen. <laughs> I, I think I listened to the one that you're talking about um, ending with. I did listen True, to that. Yeah, yeah. And I... It was one listen, so I didn't really get into the nitty gritty of the words. Yeah. It's kind of like poetry. You have to read it at least three times to really yeah. understand it. And um, I read about it and I knew that it was more of a darker, it had a darker edge to it, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I do a track called um, Step Aside Boys. And I mentioned earlier about the genre chap hop. I love that name. Wait, stop. Let's stop there. I love that. Oh, name. Step Aside that's Boys. A good name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I mentioned earlier in the interview about the, the subgenre of chat hop, and you've already mentioned about interviewing um, Thomas Benjamin Wilder Squire. He is part of this subculture, a very elegant chap, plays the ukulele very well, very well spoken, wears a lot of tweed. And that genre, as I mentioned, only exists of men. So me being the first female, I wanted to make a piece that really punched them in the face. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I kind of um, decided I was going to write the Step Aside Boys. And I basically, you might have heard, we mentioned um, me as a rap artist. And as a rapper, you, you tend to, you diss other rappers. That's what you do, you put them down. So this whole piece is a putting those gentlemen down <laughs> for their quirks. So I go through. So I go through all three of them. However, the very eloquent British way is I did email them all first to ask if I could do this. <laughs> how polite of you. Very British, I was going to so, say, how polite uh, yeah, of you. Yeah, very British. British. <laughs> I know. So of course they all, yeah, absolutely, yeah, said, please do this. And yeah, no, it's, it's really nice. It's really fun. I kind of work with Tom, um, Tom first. And then I move on to a gentleman, Professor Elemental, who is, um, I work with him a lot. We duet together on a couple of tracks. He's a very eccentric chap, uh, wears a lot of pith helmets and does a lot of rap. And I recently went on a um, holiday down to Brighton and he taught me how to rap and freestyle. And then it ends with a chap called Mr. B, the Gentleman Rhymer. And he is the, um, the brains behind the idea of chap hop. He was the founder, that's the word I was after. He was the founder of the genre. And um, so it ends with him and he's got a huge following. So me dissing him, a lot of people took it with a pinch of salt. They knew it was just a bit of a comic, comic move. So uh, yeah, but, but it certainly was hoping to make me stand out against the big boys. So <laughs> yeah, it's a fun. And has it, has it done that? Do yeah, I mean, I, the guys did say 98% like, of the interest will be purely comical value, but you might get a 2% of people, you know, being, whoa, calm down there, do you know? Yeah, you know, but I, I was ready for that. I was fine, you know, I was ready for that, so. Is all of your music like this synthesis of a uh, swing and rap and electric elements? How would you describe it? Yeah, it's kind of a mashup. As I said, I don't fit into one straight genre. It is all electronically produced with, I use music producers. Myself as a person, I'm a performer, an artist and a lyricist. So I'm not a producer. I haven't got the abilities to physically make the music here. I write a lot. Actually, I had a call last night. I was working with a producer last night, um, someone in Russia, which is amazing. And yeah, so I help a lot, a lot of people send me the tracks without the songs and I'll kind of send them lyrics back and forth. I'm the kind of black sheep. Do you have that saying over there? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't like being put in a box, pigeonholed, you know, being predictable. That's, that's not me. I've started working a lot on close harmony trios, which echoes from the Ando Andrew sisters. So a lot of my choruses now will be based on three, three voices, all me. But I, I really like that sound. And again, that kind of echoes back to our 40s period. But then that sound works so nice as a contrast to my rap style as well it's kind of like i am collaborating with another artist whether it be you know inside my my head actually but um it makes that sweet and soft or that kind of the yin and the yang i like that i quite like that with my music so uh, yeah yeah oh cool i like that too i i feel like a whole new world <laughs> you're opening up a whole new world to me so and that's what i like about doing this because i choose people who you know, I reach out to people who are doing something that I think is interesting. And then I get an opportunity to like really dive deep mm. into what they're doing. 
and you know learn new things tom caradine i am like a big fan i do his uh sing along every week um yeah. if i can it, it's one o'clock in the afternoon here i've missed it a couple times but it you know it's you know it's that old time music that like my parents played but now it's like it's so meaningful to me so it gives me an opportunity to really yeah. like experience you and now that we've talked i'm going to go back based on our conversation and learn yeah. you know more so um yeah i just i love it i love what you're doing i love that i found you p pretty much the way that it went was uh tom caradine and then he was on uh thomas benjamin wilde esquire yes. show <laughs> and then i was in his world and then i saw yeah. your interview and then it was like wow i really <laughs> like this and so who knows who's going to be next in that That's chain true. I suppose within my music, where my music's going in the future, where I mentioned the Swing Sisters project, but I'm also at the start of a, a, a crossroads where a lot of my early music was on the comedic value. My, um, my first introduction to this world was via a very comedic artist, Professor Elemental, so I wrote in that style, that hilarious style. However, now that I'm working a lot more with producers and labels, I'm starting to move away from that. Still have it in mind and still write for my original audiences, but I'm starting to write quite serious stuff as well, like you heard my freestyle spoken word. Um, which was the, the very chalk and cheese. So I'm at that, that crossing road now where I'm trying to please all, um, but keep myself happy as well. So who knows where I will go? Yeah, yeah. So I know that my track that will be released with the Swing Sisters project is a serious, powerful track. It's called Don't Girl. So you can get the idea of what kind of thing that's going to be. So it's a um, powerful pro-woman track. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. Excited for making more new music, basically. So, <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how, you know, the only constant is change. And I think we all have to keep changing. And you start in a place and then you start moving. And um, I, you know, I sense that in you, that there is a, a movement and a forward and, you know, like your music, mm -hmm. synthesizing things into it. Yes. So it's exciting. Yes. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Good stuff. <laughs> and also, um, I noticed so you are you're not on Patreon, but you are on Kofi. You can you can tip Madam Misfit. You can buy her a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and uh through Kofi and I'll put that link out there as well. And uh, you know, indie artists, we're all trying to figure it out without inundating people with uh commercials and that type of thing. I I've really tried to stay away from doing commercials. So, um, yeah, we just want to get, we want to get our art and our work out to you the best way we can and make it accessible. And also if you are, um, moved to do so, uh, then you can throw us all a tip. Sounds great to me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, and I look forward to watching your career progress. It's a very exciting trajectory, I think. <laughs> Keep checking in. <laughs> okay, well, it was great meeting very you. Lovely. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> there you have it, Madam Misfit and the music of World War II. To find out more about Madam Misfit and the topics discussed today, be sure to check out our episode notes. I'd also like to take a moment to give a big shout out to Armchair Historian's Patreon patron, John Swan. Thanks for your ongoing support. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. This, my fine fellows, is a song I've written for you. True you. I want to meet you, greet you, and lick your face. Are you from this planet or outer space? My friendship extends across the galaxy. Everyone's invited, come party with me. There's a sign on the door that say, hey, just beware. No room in here for those who stare. Individuality's the theme for tonight. Put on your glad rags, no bullies in sight. Okay, now what we need is just one big chorus to unite us all. So follow me. Yeah.
eccentric and magnificent So less impressed diversity, it's really okay Your skin, your hair, or you're just a big gay Being true to yourself is a splendid feature Not a wannabe fame-seeking golden creature Cause let's face the fact, vanilla's just boring Got sprinkles and glitter, and now you're talking Living in fear, oh so cool, trying to fit in the clique, when actually, mate, you're just a massive prick. <laughs> 